Welcome to my vlog. So we're here at RJ Anderson's off-road garage doing a favor. They're trying to sell a show. So I'm just here to kind of help out, be a guest star and try to get this show off and going. So hopefully it goes good. So tell me a little bit of what you do in the garage here. Yeah, welcome to the shop. I guess this is where you can say all the magic happens. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty good at tearing stuff up out on the racetrack. So this is where we come in. This is our shop. This is our place of business where we come back, regroup, reprep the vehicles, get them ready for the next race and ready to rip through the desert. Awesome. And um, we're here doing a, like a sizzle reel. You're trying to pitch a show? Or? Yeah, the grid off road is, is a sizzle reel to pitch a show, exactly. So got you guys coming in, getting you hyped on hopefully building some off-road vehicles to get you out there playing with us. Yeah, definitely. Welcome to the grid off road. I'm RJ Anderson, six time champion with over hundred career off-road racing podiums. I started racing at 14 years old. Now at 24, I own RJ37 off road where we build and prep some of the baddest players racers on the planet. Today, I brought my friend Vern Troyer in to give him a little bit of a taste of what we can pull off in these Polaris Razors. Hey guys, it's Vern Troyer, and I'm here uh, to say hi to my good friend RJ Anderson at RJ37's Off-Road Garage. A couple years ago, I got into, uh, well, I got to race a Polaris Razor, and I wanted to get the fastest time. In order for me to do that, I overdid the last jump, and uh, my foot came off the brake, and. I slammed right into a, a fence post. Luckily, I didn't hit anybody. But uh, ever since then, I've been wanting, wanting to get back into it. So uh, hopefully RJ can hook me up. Hey, RJ. Hey, what up, Vern? What up, dude? Not much, how's it going? Good, good. The Polaris Razor is such a good platform. We can go from mild to wild on these things. And what you're looking at is a Lucas Oil off-road short course car. So we do, first of all, a lot of safety modifications to the, the roll cage and, and suspension stuff. We keep these things really sucked up for the high banked corners. It's not going over real rough um, terrain. It's just basically jumps and corners. So okay. basically keep this thing rolling as light as possible. Okay. So, so something like this is, is more race orientated. It's, it's more meant for bashing and, and running into <laughs> everyone and, and crashing and rolling over. I took one of these around a racetrack and uh, had some jumps and things like that. I had some guys custom make me a seat. You can take the seat that you've already had built for you, drop it right in this car or any of the other Polaris Razors I have in the shop, mount up some extensions for the pedals and you're ready to rip. You're going around the racetrack. That'd be awesome. Kind of got the corners down and the jumps, but like I said, that last one, I just overdid it. A lot of it's timing and just seat time too, just getting used to looking at a jump and being like, hey, I need to hit this so faster, you know, and that's something I can help coach you through. The important thing about these cars is you notice they're really short, especially yeah. compared to some trucks. Um, if you have a lip that's even shorter than the car, so basically the front wheels are leaving the lip before the back wheels have even got, that's what'll cause them a lot of times to go over. One of my rules is you make the jump at least a car and a half long. So the front and the back tires are at least on the takeoff at the same time. That's a big key into jumping these things. I was going online and I uh, came across your your crazy video of uh, you and one of these um, going through tunnels and going around a, a circular dome thing, and then you did that backflip. How how the hell did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was my uh, most recent XP1K4 video. So that's my actually fourth installment of our of our series. So it's oh, okay. the fourth one I've done, and uh, that was pretty crazy. Every year. Um, the goal is just to show what these vehicles are capable of. Um, get off-road in the hands of, of the world. So that's what we've done there. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. The wall of death. Um, <laughs> I've, you've probably seen it on a motorcycle yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, so I've never it, seen it with one of these. Yeah, so it was pretty crazy getting a 1,500-pound car up on a vertical wall <laughs> and going around in a circle. And not so. coming off the lip up there. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then we ended it with a big backflip. So that was a... I, I noticed on that backflip, the the jump thing was kind of mechanical, yep. where it kind of flipped it. Mm -hmm. So I actually trained with a bunch of freestyle motocross guys that kind of helped teach me, because I've never done a backflip. I race cars, you know, I don't yeah, do yeah. freestyle. I sat there staring at the ramp the first time and I was like, what did I get myself into? I don't do this, but uh, yeah. So it actually, the ramp was in two pieces. So it was kind of shaped like this. And when the fronts went off, it hit a bar that basically the front sat on. So it would fall down and the, the front would hit a ramp at this angle okay. and the back would only hit a ramp at this angle. So the front would go real severe and the back would kind of stay on the throttle oh, okay. and it follow through really hard. So based on, I was able to train into a foam pit first. It, oh, wasn't, sure, it okay. wasn't just a first try, let's hope this works. So um, you stay in the throttle really hard and you could actually control it a little bit in the air. I was surprised through gas brakes. Um, really? You're obviously not steering at your set, but I was able to practice in a foam pit, get my speeds down before sticking it to dirt. Wow, that, that was just, 
I mean, I enjoyed watching it. I watched it more than once. I, I couldn't believe you did some of that stuff. Yeah, we'll have to. Uh, I got a car with two seats in it if you want to go for a ride. You have a helmet? <laughs> <laughs> yep, we can arrange that. Okay, well, let's check it out. This is more of a, I, what we call a play car. So take it out to the desert, take it out to the dunes. It's got two seats, one for your buddy. It's got a radio. When I want to go have fun with my buddies on the weekend, get away from racing, this is what I fire up. Well, this looks awesome. And it's called the Caroline? Yeah, I call her Caroline, so. Is that your girlfriend? Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Sweet Caroline, after the song. This, it starts as a Polaris Razor XP Turbo. And from there, everything's, you're able to bolt it on. It's nothing's custom modification, similar like what our race car stuff is. Okay. This one actually has long travel on it, so it goes to the desert. It's a little bit wider, a little bit extended wheelbase, more for like a comfortable ride. It holds two people, so you have your buddy with you, um, full radio, rugged radio setup in it. This is exactly something that I would love to, you know, customize myself. Uh, just to, you know, like you said, make it look cool. Yeah, what's cool about this is you can basically fit your personality with it, whether you're wanting to go out on night rides and you need a bunch of lights with it, or, okay. or you're going on long adventures and you want a roof rack that holds gear, or, or whatever you might be going to do. If you're going out in the woods and you want to take it shooting, you want to mount gun racks to it. You can <laughs> literally do whatever you want. Comfort, sport, and extreme, I think, are the three <laughs> modes. And the shocks are all hooked to a computer. If you go over a jump, it senses all the tires have no force on them, and it goes full stiff. So when you land, it's full stiff. And then when you're going over bumps, it softens it up. It like adjusts the shocks, because they all have clickers on them, uh -huh. but it adjusts on the fly, so you don't have to. It's, it's kind of like, almost like a, a new car nowadays. Exactly. Um, like on my Audi, I have comfort racing or whatever you call it. You can adjust the, the engine noise and make it sound mean and stuff like that. I have an addition on this one that you might be fairly interested in. Come back here. What's that? You gotta come back to the exhaust. So this might be something you wanna put on yours, Fern. What is that? Have you used one of these before? No, what is it? It's called a muff pot. It's a muffler, so yeah. <laughs> That's a good name for it. <laughs> <laughs> and it basically cooks your burritos on the trail. So you wrap some pizza rolls or your favorite burrito in there, close it up, put her on the exhaust right here, <laughs> and you drive for about five minutes and your burrito's ready to rip. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> do you get enough time to actually do recreational driving or? There is a couple trips a year where I'll make, well, it's just me and my buddies and we'll go set up camp and we'll we'll throw a fire in the center and we'll just hang out and have a good time. So um, most of the time it is work, but um, it's hard to call it work at the end of the day, I guess. Yeah, because you love what you do. Exactly. Yeah, same with me. Thank you for showing me Caroline and all your other uh, razors. It's been pretty sweet. Yeah, no problem, man. I'll Thanks. get you out in the dirt now. Yeah, definitely. Might do that next time. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. When I take a selfie, I can't get my whole face in it. So my arms aren't long enough. Faster burn. I got my oh shit handle, so uh, I'm good to go. <laughs> Perfect. Two takes. I'd say this tire is about two feet, five inches, because I'm 2'8". <laughs>